The word Rabb in Arabic, if you look at the, uh, the linguistic origin, has several implications in it. But the first and primary of them is, you know, uh, absolute owner. For example, Rabbu Abdin, Rabb, the master of a slave, or Rabbul Bayt. Rabbul Bayt meaning the owner of a house. But it's not just any kind of owner. Because you know, another word, of, word for ownership is Malik. So you could also say Malikul Bayt, the owner of a house. So then the question is, how is the ownership of the word Rabb different from the ownership of Malik? Actually, ownership is only one part of the many meanings of the word Rabb. While Malik exclusively means owner, Rabb includes the meaning of Malik, but includes other things too. So what are these other things? Rabb huwa al-Malik, wa sayyid wa al-Murabbi, wa al-Murshid, wa al-Qayyim, wa al-Mun'im. Several things are included inside the word Rabb. Now let's look at all of them. Rabb huwa al-Malik, I just said he's owner. But then I said was sayyid who has the complete authority also. Is it possible you own something, but you're not completely in charge of it? Like your car, right? You're, you're, you own it, but you have to get it inspected, you have to get it registered, you can't take it at any speed you want. You have ownership, but it's limited ownership because it doesn't come with full authority. A Rabb is someone who has ownership and at the same time also has authority. Then, wal murabbi. this is a very interesting and powerful word. Surah Al-Isra. Allah says, وَقُرْ رَبِّ الْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا Rabbayani, Rabbayani, Rabb, in Rabbayani. So some people start thinking Rabbayani here, the root letters, the origin is also Rabb. It's not Ra, Ba, Ba, it's actually Ra, Ba, and Wow. Rabba, Yurabbi, Tarbiya. Tarbiya is to ensure the growth and maturity of something until it reaches the stage that you want it to reach. That root, Tarbiya, is included inside Rabb. They're not the same, but one is a subset of the other. In other words, when we say Rabb, when we call Allah Azza wa Jal Rabb, part of that meaning is Murabbi, the one who ensures growth. Then Wal Murshid guides it too, that's part of Rabb. And then Wal Mun'im grants gifts. He gives, he's the one who gives gifts. In other words, the one, if, if Allah is Rabb to us, He doesn't owe us anything. Anything He gives us will be considered a gift. It's not something He's obligated to give us at all. It's considered a gift. That's part of the meaning of Rabb. Then Wal Qayyim, and finally the word Al Qayyim, Al Qayyim implies the one, he's the one ensuring the existence of the subject. Right? So if we're subjects to Allah Azza wa Jal, then the only reason we exist is He allows us to exist. If you want to take a worldly parallel, if, if you're taking care of a really delicate plant, and if you stop taking care of it for like one day, it would die. Right? Or half an hour, it would just die. The only reason it's surviving is constant care. You are the reason for its continual existence. This is Qayyim. Allah Azza wa Jal calls himself Al-Qayyim and it's embedded in the meaning of Rabb.